Bluebird 198, one localizer established, to send Alice. One steps on localizer, send Alice, one Bluebird 198, could you give me a wind check, please? Well, welcome aboard, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Doug Catterall. I'm the captain today on uh, Air Canada Jazz Flight 8161. With me today in the right seat is uh, First Officer Joshua Reap. And uh, we're going to be uh, taking you through to a uh, return trip from uh, Vancouver International to Victoria uh, and back again on a uh, DH8, DHC 8-8100 series. Uh, a lot of our SOPs that we have at Jazz are geared around phase of flight. And this is one of the shorter sectors that we have. So what we find is that we typically will compress things on a shorter flight. We're going to be uh, uh, programming our FMS, so we'll be building our departure uh, and our arrival at the same time and doing as much cross-checking as we can on the ground. Because uh, one of the biggest uh, threats that we have to deal with, particularly on a nice day like this, is all the other VFR aircraft in the, uh, in the area. Very busy uh, uh, airspace between here and uh, Victoria. So anyway, we've, what we've accomplished so far is we have our IFR clearance. We're flying the Richmond 3 departure, uh, which is uh, essentially a, a left turnout off departure uh, off a of runway 26 left, and then heading over uh, southbound to, uh, to Victoria. We've initialized the FMS, and uh, we've built our, uh, our flight plan and uh, loaded up the uh, fuel data. And uh, the thing about the, uh, the FMSs on the, uh, on the Dash 8 is they're independent, uh, unlike, say, a CRJ or some other aircraft where uh, inputs on one FMS is automatically displayed on the uh, on the slave unit. We have to back it up manually. So we've accomplished the pre-flight. Uh, the only thing left to do, actually, Joshua, is we'll just confirm the waypoint. So I'll just run through that with you. Sure. I could read it off. You, you read it off, and I'll confirm it then. Okay, CYVR, off 26 left, the Richmond 3 departure. YVR, 8 past 4. For his runway 09, Brandy. Brandy for the ILS 09. Okay. And CYYJ Victoria. That looks good. Right. And as far as the actual uh, actual lakes concern, the departure that we're going to be flying is the, uh, the Richmond 3 off runway 26 left. So at 500 feet, we'll be flying, a heading a, making a left turn to a heading of 200, maintaining 2,000. And then the arrival for uh, Victoria. We picked up the ATIS for Victoria on the ground here, and uh, the arrival is what's known as the uh, APAS arrival, which I can't find because it's at the back. Here we go. Uh, so after the Vancouver VOR, we're going to be landing on runway 09, so we're going to be coming down to the active pass NDB, and then a right turn to the Victoria VOR, and then if we were IFR conditions, we'd head out to this waypoint called Kelku, and then expect radar vectors to the final approach course 09. However, I expect that we'll be offered a visual approach today because the weather is uh, is uh, cab okay. Current temperature is plus 24, and uh, the winds are light out of the uh, out of the east. A couple of things we need to accomplish before we get going and uh, before we start boarding is we have a, a flight attendant briefing that we'll be accomplishing. We do this together. We practice uh, uh, emergencies uh, of the month and. Uh, discuss any issues that may be of uh, common interest to us as a crew as we uh, work together. We're actually going to be paired up for the next four days. This is the first two legs of a four-day pairing. The uh, other interesting thing is uh, about the Dash 8 uh, 100, which differs from a 300, is uh, it flies a little bit different. It's shorter coupled, but it, it also has a, uh, a different feature uh, here. The uh, fuel scheduling is slightly different. We depart with the uh, takeoff power setting, and then once we're in the after takeoff and uh, and the cruise section, we go to a normal fuel scheduling. Whereas on the uh, Dash 8300, this is always left in the uh, the TOP. Uh, an excellent safety feature on this airplane uh, is the uh, the TAWS or the Terrain Avoidance Warning System. And right now, we have it set up on the first officer's side, and it gives us a uh, a running display of the, uh, the terrain threats. And it's based on a, on a database and satellite input as to where we are. And as we navigate our way over to Victoria this afternoon, we're going to see uh, different views and different uh, uh, terrain threats as we approach them. Now, normally when you're flying IFR altitudes, you'll be kept away from any uh, terrain issues. But uh, on a VFR day, uh, in mountainous terrain, you can get fairly close to it, and it'll actually alert you and give you uh, 
give you terrain warnings. Takeoff briefing. Okay, we're going to be departing off runway uh, uh, 26 left. Flaps. System which we'll use on this one is to uh, take the uh, flap setting and power setting off the aero data which is contained in the operational flight plan. And uh, off runway 26 left from uh, full length, more or less full length. It's telling us that flap selection today is going to be 5 degrees. We're going to use reduced power at uh, 81%, and the uh, the max V1 for our departure is going to be 99 knots. So uh, departing off runway 26 left, flaps are 5, takeoff power reduced 81, the max is 100, and the clearance, as I mentioned before, is the uh, Richmond 3, runway heading up to 500 feet, then a left turn to a heading of 200. But in the event of an engine failure, we have a, uh, uh, a TLR, takeoff landing report, and it gives us an engine out route to fly in case of, uh, of an engine failure. And in this particular case off runway 26 left, we're going to fly to 1,000 feet and then turn left to a heading of 130 and keep climbing at our, uh, our engine out speed until we reach a safe altitude, a sector altitude, or, or so on. And uh, any questions on that, Josh? No, no questions. Okay. Hold that the line. Okay. Normally while we're waiting for our final load figures from uh, the uh, ground crew, I would have my page uh, set up with the fuel uh, page so we can enter in the passenger load and the cargo load and on on the first officer side the actual uh, ACARS uh, weight and balance page. So we're actually going to input the uh, the uh, the payload and the fuel. We fire it off to uh, to Halifax and it comes back with uh, an approved weight and balance for us. And if we need to adjust the load by moving passengers one way or another that will tell us. So I've just asked for the signal to bring the props out of feather. Ground Jazz 161 is door 33 right for taxi. Jazz 161 afternoon 26 left, altimeter is 3007. Taxi Golf Hotel Delta, Delta 5. Okay, Golf Hotel Delta, Delta 5 for Jazz 161. Roger. 3007 set. Hey, and set jet 687, so we are ready for taxi. We have Oscar, we're over to customs. So the routing uh, Golf Hotel uh, Delta for Delta 5. Correct. What we're doing is uh, saving a little bit of fuel. Uh, it's standard procedure to taxi with one engine and start feather, so it's a slightly lower RPM. And if you look closely, it's a little bit less fuel flow on that engine. If there's uh, lengthy delays, that can add up to significant fuel savings over the course of, uh, course of a trip. All right, so we have the flight attendant on the line here. What's it doing here, right? Well, it looks like we're number one. Yeah. So what I'll do in anticipation of that is I'll bring the other engine out of feather. Bring tower up. Right on. And when ready, Josh, uh, flat five before takeoff jet. Tower exec jet 687 is up with you, holding short, 26 left at Charlie. Line up only, it is clear left. Clear right. Jazz 161, Richmond 3, wind 280, 10 knots, clear takeoff, runway 26 left, early turn to prove your Hey, clear takeoff, 26 left, and Delta 5, Richmond 3, for Jazz 161. Yeah, before takeoff check is complete. Okay, here we go. And we're clear to go. Check. 
Be one. Okay. Gear up. IS one. IS one seventeen. Nav mode out zone. Out 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 zone. Good afternoon, Air Canada 562 with you. Gonna be ready to go again. Flaps so are off my power. Captain, take off. Turn the wind 280, 290 now at 9 knots. Georgia 4, clear take off. Runway 26 left. Georgia 4, clear take off. 26 left. Air Canada 562. Uh, whenever you're ready, Josh, I'll give you a quick approach for you. Just going to let them know we're uh, on our way here. Sure. Okay, I am ready. All right. Uh, for now, we're on radar vectors, uh, expecting the uh, visual approach uh, for runway 09. And the, uh, the sector altitude out this way is uh, the high sector is 5,800. And um, we'll plan on uh, touching down on runway 09 and take the first exit. It's probably going to be uh, Whiskey or Sierra. Okay. And uh, Jazz 161, have you got the airport inside? We do. Inside for Jazz 161. Jazz 161, your visual approach, runway 09, 3,500 to final. Stay west of the Victoria viewer. Okay, visual approach, runway 09, 3,500 until final. Stay west of Victoria VOR for Jazz 161. Jazz 161, that's correct. Contact Victoria Tower 1197. 1197 for Jazz 161. All right, so uh, confirm 3500 out so. Confirm. Okay, and I check uh, uh, turn final west of the Victoria VOR. Okay. Tower Jazz 161, we're on the visual approach runway 09, final ladder west of uh, Victoria VOR. Jazz 161, not below 3,500. The paragliding zone is active 2,500 below you. I'll lower for you once you clear that. Okay, not below 3,500, Jazz 161. And to finish off my uh, approach briefing there, is that our wait for landing? Yeah, that's yeah, correct. Okay, yep. so we can expect 29,000 pound landing. Yeah, but Romeo, clear takeoff. Setting out 15 degrees. We'll use 1050 on the condition levers. Uh, the ref is 94, so the approach is going to be uh, 99. That's set left. Set. And the go around will be 100% uh, if required. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to switch to VL mode now. And uh, we've got the ILS up for runway uh, runway uh, 09. Inbound track of uh, 089. Okay, vertical speed, we're just on our descent now to uh, 3,500. 4,035. The Victoria VOR is right on the. Jazz 161, continue unrestricted for runway 09. Unrestricted for 09, Jazz 161. We'll put on a VFR circuit altitude in. And tower to the downwind 09, pulls up. We're turning Do final west of the VOR. Close, it's right on the top of uh, Mount Tuam. Keep it close, it lands 09, feel my alpha. 
And we're just going to try to stay over the water for noise abatement purposes and turn final just inside the Mill Bay Beacon. And the Victoria Airport is just coming into view at about our uh, 10 o'clock position. Josh, I'm going to disengage the autopilot. So our flight director is uh, standby. You're down. Flat 15, landing check. 10.50. Setting the props here for 10.50. All right, landing check. Flight attendants advised, initiate the manual. Caution lights checked. Synchro phase off. Landing gear, three green. Flat. So Mike, Alpha, hold short echo, you 15 can set and it's ground uh, there. Condition levers, 1050. And bleeds to go. Radio altimeter. Zero nine for Jazz one six one. Clear land. Clear to land. Clear to land. Clear to land. Clear to land. Got the downward traffic back here. Okay. Five hundred. Check. Please off. Check. Line checks are complete. One hundred, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. Six four zero five line up special zero nine. I'm in the city on departure to be a left turn heading zero two zero. Balance unchanged. Line up zero nine. I'm in the city heading zero two zero. Balance unchanged. Number four zero five. As one six four nine is Pierre Ground twenty one nine. Zero three one nine off jazz one six one. What we do is uh after the uh, propellers are feathered, we wait at least 30 seconds.
in order for the oil to return back to the sump so you can get an accurate oil quantity reading. Yeah, it's a very beautiful part of the country, without a doubt, and uh, it's sort of unusual at this time of day, very little traffic and uh, ideal conditions, and uh, we basically flew right down the, uh, uh, in, right between Mill Bay and the airport, and uh, the section of highway up there is called the Malahat. Quite often in the wintertime, it can have uh, a fair bit of wind and uh, uh, low ceilings along through there. Uh, but generally speaking, it's usually a little bit nicer weather on the island than it is on, on the mainland, but we try to keep that a secret here. <laughs> Welcome to Victoria.